video I'm going to show you some advanced GUI input and output techniques. Previously I made this simple GUI where I have an edit text box and I put in a number here and it calculates and returns the inverse of that value in a static text box. So just to show you how that works, some different values in the input and then the corresponding output. So under the hood in the GUI, the edit text box I called edit my input and in its callback function here I read the value and then I calculated the inverse and then I used the set function. So set handles text my output and I set the string value to num to string y. And now let's add a few extra features that will make things a bit nicer. The first thing I'm going to do is to add a title within the text box so you actually know the meaning of the value that the static text box is returning. So this num to string y returns a string. Let's add a little bit to it. So to concatenate strings, I have to enclose it in brackets. And then, uh, it's just like concatenating matrices. So I type y equals, and so here we are concatenating strings. There's a y equals string, and there's the string that comes from num to string. And then I will put this in the output. So if I save this, uh, I'll also want to go back to the GUI itself and make this text box a little bit wider so it can handle all of that output. I'll save it, close the other one, and then type hit run. And now if I type here 1, then I get y equals 1, 2, y equals 0 0.5, and so on. Now I can make this better so that it in initially starts out with that additional Y string in there. And I'll save it and we'll do it again. Okay, now you see, yes, it starts with that label in there. Now let's try doing a calculation of another variable and we'll call it theta which will be x squared. So the problem with these these static text boxes is that you cannot put in Greek symbols unless you change the font to symbol. So we can actually do a very nice thing and we can use an axis as an output method or an output object. So I'm going to call this axes display theta. And I have to remember that because we'll refer to that handle later. So I've saved it and I, I return now to the callback for the, the edit box in which I entered the x value. And now I have to use the axes command to make handles axes display theta. And then we use the text command. In general, we type, we use the text command like this. We give it an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and then we give it a string and that prints the string of interest at these coordinates on the axes. But we don't care too much about coordinates, so we're just going to give it 0 and 0. And the string that we want to use 
is going to be a composite string. So what we'll do is we'll say in dollar signs theta equals, in fact, I have to break this string up because we're going to terminate the first part of it and then we're going to put here num2 string theta. Now of course I haven't defined theta yet but we will in a moment. I said something like let's say theta is x squared so we'll just do that. And now if I save this and I'll run it you can see what happens uh, it's not going to be incredibly nice. But you'll get the idea. So if I type 1 here, okay, so it didn't like this reference to axes display theta. I bet what I forgot was the handles object. No, I guess I got that. Oh, I remember I needed to use a lowercase theta because that's the way the symbol is. So let's go back to the GUI. We'll run it. Try it again. Now there it is. I've got the theta equals 1 in dollar signs. Not very nice. What I need to do in here is put interpreter LaTeX. And it's often nice to make the font size bigger. So we'll just continue this on the next line. Let's save that and go back. Now you see, okay, it's theta equals 1. But we would like to make the axes less obvious and more subdued. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set its color to be the same as the figure color. So let's type figure color equals get. GCF returns the current figure. We type color and then we can set handles axes display theta set its color to figure color and there are other axes properties we're going to want to change and I can show you that in a moment but here's how that affects the the GUI so I'll put in 2 now for theta and I have theta equals 4 and now the, the background color of the axes is the same as the figure. Let's also set the x and y ticks to be blank. Let's see how that affects it. So I'll put in 3 for x and then I get this. And it keeps overriding it. Maybe we don't like that. So what we can do is we can put CLA for uh, clear the current axes and let's see what happens when I put in a 4 okay and then 3 2 that's better finally let's get rid of those lines the axes lines I'll type X color and I can set it to figure color and Y color figure color. Going back here now I have a very elegant label it's actually much much nicer than this one. In fact what I would recommend you do is make your own function that does all of this and perhaps you can feed it a, a string and you can supply it a font size and it can just take the axes and make it 
a very nice label for you.